It has been 55 years since England have won a major international tournament. So, you know what? I thought, why don't I have a go? And let's see if I'm tailor-made to win the Euros. <laughs> Hello, 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 people. It's me, TaylorMade Gaming, back at you once again with another video. And today, we've got the start of a brand new series here on the channel. It's going to be a short, quick series, but hopefully not that short, because we are attempting to win the Euros with England. It has, of course, been 55 years since England have last won a tournament. And well, that needs to be put right. So I have booted Southgate out. I've told him he can take his stupid gilets or whatever it is he wears. He can take them with him. I don't want them. All I want is the job. And I have got it. And I think I really am tailor-made to win this tournament for England. I'm really looking forward to the tournament in real life and i'm really looking forward to trying to win it with england here and so just before we do crack on with seeing who is in the squads and having a look at the two friendlies we have played before the tournament and then getting into today's game uh yep i've just got to tell you that dodgy gamer is the one who has made this database and i'm going to be putting a link in the description down below for his video which you should go and watch he introduces the database a lot better than i ever could and also in the description of his video is going to be the links to download these files so please do go and check that video out and if you're new to him please do subscribe he is so close to a thousand subscribers so please do go and subscribe to him and say thank you for making this database. And just the one thing I would like to know about the database just before we do get started is that the fixtures aren't in the correct order for real life because of some sort of issues with the editor. I don't know, it's something way over my head. But other than that, it's got the real venues, the real stadiums everything like that so it is very very well made thank you to dodgy for making this database and now with that all said let's go and have a look and see who has made the special 26 for these summer's euros and here is the squad we're gonna do it by position just because that's how i want to do it and so goalkeepers first we've got nick pope Dean Henderson and Aaron Ramsdale. And just one little thing to note, you'll see these players have all got average ratings and appearances and all things like that. That's because on this version of the file that I'm using from Dodgy, he has simulated all the leagues for every country that's in this tournament. So that's helped me pick some of the players a little bit. So thank you to Dodgy again for doing that. Yep, we've got Pope, Henderson and Ramsdale are our three goalkeepers. You can see there, none of them have really set the world alight, but it's hard for goalkeepers to set the world alight on FM. Nick Pope has played 43 times and got an average rating of 6.82. Henderson, in a little bit of a surprise, has only made one start all season for Man U. And he's got an average rating of 6.8 from that and two sub appearances. How does a goalkeeper make a sub appearance? Interesting, but uh, whatever. And then next on, we've got Aaron Ramsdale, 41 appearances, 6.8. And if we just have a look and see how some of these teams have done in the league, Burnley have finished 13th, which for Burnley, not terrible. I would be quite happy with that if I was a Burnley fan, I think. And so, Aaron Ramsdale playing for Sheffield United. Ah, they've finished bottom in the league. Might not want to be picking a goalkeeper who's just been relegated. That might not be the best idea I've ever had. And so, moving on to the defenders. 
actually, let's just get rid of get rid of everyone else. And so here we are. We've got Harry Maguire, of course. Harry Maguire, old slaphead. He was always going to be in the squad. He's played 57 times, got an average rating of 7.24. John Stones alongside him. He's only made three starts. Not the best, but I'm hoping to get a couple of games in him in this tournament and he might be all right. But other than that, we've got Fikeo Tamori, who plays for AC Milan, is it? Yeah, it is AC Milan. And he's got 10 caps already, including a couple. I think I played him in a couple of the friendlies. So, yep, he's in. He's played 59 times and got an average rating of 7.01. In fact, who's our highest rated defender? Uh, it is... Declan Rice, my boy, my boy Declan Rice. He's played 39 times, scored 7, assisted 10, got an average rating of 7.4. Maybe I might have to move him into the starting 11. I might put him in over Stones. I'm not sure. But yeah, very happy with that. And if you have a look as well at how West Ham have done, if, if we finished in the league, Oh, my days. Very, very happy with that. We've also got Aaron Wan-Bissika, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Daya Bertrand and Chilwell. And then as far as midfielders go, let's have a look. We've got Eric Dyer, Jordan Henderson, Calvin Phillips, who I wasn't going to pick. But that average rating, 7.23, over 42 games. He had to make it in. He had to make it in, as indeed he has. Raheem Sterling, of course, he was never going to miss out. He's got a 7.58 rating over 58 games, which is phenomenal. I'm hoping he can bring that form in for us. Jack Grealish, again, another one I wasn't going to pick. But 7.29 rating, it had to be done. Jaden Sancho. He, I've brought him in, 7.33. James Madison, I'm a big fan of James Madison, so he was always going to make it in. Bill Foden has been a little bit disappointing, only getting a 6.9, but he is in the squad. Deli Alley, 7.33. And Jude Bellingham on a 6.97, but he did score in one of our friendlies, which you will see in a minute. And then up front, we've got Deli Ali, Harry Kane, Marcus Rashford, Ollie Watkins, Dominic Calvert Lewin, and Ivan Tony. Now, I think Watkins and Tony getting in would probably be seen as a little bit of a surprise. But you can see there, Watkins has scored 16 goals in the Premiership. Ivan Tony has scored 20 in the Championship. So. I had to bring them. They've both been scoring goals. They've both been doing very, very well. And so that is the 26 that is hopefully going to bring the Euro Trophy home to England. So let's have a look at our friendly results. We've played two friendlies. And the first one was a 1-0 win against Ukraine. We had to work hard for that. Ollie Watkins coming off the bench. On his debut, won that one for us with a 1-0 win there. Not the best performance, but we got a win. I was happy with it. But then what I was not happy with was two things. Who on earth scheduled us to play France in a friendly? Who thought that was a good idea? If, if anybody would like to see that IRL, let me know. But no, not before a major tournament do you play one of your big rivals. And as you can see, Kylian Mbappe did what Kylian Mbappe does and absolutely put us to the sword as he scored a half-hour hat-trick. Usman Dembele made it 4-0. Jude Bellingham, getting what I think is his first goal for his country, uh, made it 4-1 in the second half. So at least we won that. But yeah. That is the friendlies, that is the squad. Let's go and get into tactics and then into today's game. This is the team that we're going for, for our first game in this tournament against Croatia. 
we're going with Nick Pope in goal, Bertrand, Maguire, Rice and Alexander-Arnold are our back four. Ideally, I wanted to play Alexander-Arnold in the midfield, but Aaron Wan-Bissika, who would have been competing with Alexander-Arnold, has picked up a little bit of an injury. He's out for two to three weeks, so that's forced TAA back into the right-back spot. And then in the midfield, we've got Calvin Phillips and Jordan Henderson, both playing as Mazalas. Phil Foden as the advanced playmaker. And then on the wings, we've got Sterling and Sancho. Who on earth else would you want on the wings? Two fantastic players there. And then we've got Harry Kane playing as a pressing forward, hoping he can run around, nick the ball a couple times, and put the ball in the back of the net. And so, I'll see you in a second when we're in the dressing room with the lads. Okay, here we are. We're in the dressing room. I'm going to go pump my fist. And I'm going to say, come on lads, show me what you can do. No reaction. That's disappointing. But, let's go into the game. Come on England. 2-0 win. That's what I'm predicting. First highlight of the tournament, we've thrown it into the box. Croatia are trying to get it away, and I think they might have. Yes, they have. It's gone to Kramaric, back to Vlasic. And now, what is he going to do with the ball? Win this back. Nope, it's gone back to Modric, who's just pinged it long. Kramaric is in, and we're behind. Oh, three minutes in, and it's a disastrous start for the hosts. Oh... Oh, my days. What a terrible start that is. And what a simple goal to concede. Modric's doing what Modric does, but we should have defended against that better. And, well, 1-0 down. Nine minutes in now. It's Croatia again coming forward. Barisic to Brozovic, but Henderson has won it. And now Henderson got it. We're, we're on the counter. We've got a man in space. Harry Kane, is he onside? We're going to find out in a minute as he's dinked it over the keeper. And I think that's going to count. I do believe that is about to count as we have levelled almost immediately there. What a way to respond. What a very nice, cool goal here from Harry Kane. Kept himself onside perfectly. And then the keeper came out. And by the time he had, Harry Kane knew exactly what he was going to do. 17 minutes in now, Modric with a corner and their header has been saved by Nick Pope. Hopefully we can get some divine intervention with his name being in goal. Now come on, he's gone long but Sancho has lost it. And Arnold has it though, he's gone long. Kane, he loses it out there. Dejan Lovren, now to Brozovic. Now out wide, it's Rebic. Rebic cutting inside. And that should be easy for Pope, as indeed it is. And he's just thinking, what is he going to do? Again, he's just hoofed it long to nobody in particular. Now, Modric over the top again. Kramaric is onside, but his shot has been blocked there. And Arnold just hoofs it away. And is that going to be the end of the highlight? Or are we going to be carrying on? That isn't the end of the highlight. Just before half-time, we've got the ball. Sterling goes back to Harry Maguire. What is Slaphead going to do? He goes to Bertrand, to Sterling. And Raheem Sterling, he's got a man with him if he wants him, but he doesn't. He's going to try and get into the box, is he? Nope, he's gone back, but Rebic has intercepted it. And Sterling intercepts his pass. All very nervy from both teams at the moment. Ryan Bertrand, back to Calvin Phillips. To Bertrand once more. And Harry Kane plays it through. Sterling's in. And England. Oh, I thought that was the lead. Ah, oh, how has Sterling missed that? He would have scored that in a blue shirt. And that is half time of what has been a very nervy, very equal game. We've had eight shots to their nine. Four on target to their six. And the XG is very similar. 0.92 to 0.95. Possession, Croatia have dominated, actually. Didn't think that was the case, but oh well. Into the dressing room we go. Hands on hips. 
I'm tempted to say I'm not happy. I think that might fire the boys up. It's motivated everyone but my boy Declan Rice. We might have to keep an eye on him in the second half. And now 40 seconds into the second half, Declan Rice has the ball off Nick Pope's goal kick. And oh, he's, he's lost it there, but Henderson wins it. Can Kane get onto this? Kane can. Kane is in space, and he's put it in the back of the net. England have taken the lead against Croatia. We have come from behind. Harry Kane has done exactly what I wanted him to do when I set him as the pressing forward. And a fantastic pass from Henderson as well. And Kane, oh, maybe a little bit lucky. Maybe it was going wide until it hit Leverkovic. But I'm going to take it. And now immediately after, Rebic intercepts the pass off our free kick. Kramaric coming forward into space. Is anybody going to try and stop him? Nope. But Pope thankfully catches that very easy shot. And now Nick Pope goes long. Lovren heads away. Vlasic over the top and we get, we get that one away. Now Sancho. Can Sancho beat his man? Yes, indeed. And Kane needs to be looking at getting forward as he's played it there. But Kane is unable to get onto that pass. And now Bertrand goes long. Oh, Foden's been unable to win that one. Vlasic. Vlasic is into the box and oh, that was close. That was too close for my liking. Lots of highlights in this second half. Modric with the corner, but Pope with a beautiful catch there. Now, what is Pope going to do? He's just gone long. Stop going long, my man. Well, actually, maybe don't. As Sancho has got it. Sancho, he's into the box. He's got nobody really to help him, man. Well, that was poor. I'd have tried to hold on to that if I was him. Just about 20 minutes left to go in the game. I've made a couple of changes. Grealish is coming on for Sterling, who really hasn't done much today. And James Madison is coming on just because Calvin Phillips has got a yellow card. Just want to make sure we don't go down to 10 men. Just under 10 minutes left now. Sancho gets the ball off Trent's throw in. Sancho is in space. Can he get this into the box? Nope. Goes back to Arnold, who hits a great cross, but Kane is beaten to it. And now it's Mayer to go forward. Kramaric beats Declan Rice. I think that is there. And now he's into the box. Do not tackle him. Thankfully, we haven't. And his shot has been deflected into Pope's hands. Ooh, four minutes left. Grealish with a corner. Kane with the header. And oh, thought that might wrap the game up. Yes. The final whistle has just gone. It's a 2-1 win for England. The perfect way to start the group. We've got revenge on Croatia for beating us in the World Cup. We've had 20 shots to their 17. 10 on target apiece. 2.04 XG for us to their 1.58. They won the possession battle, but we won the battle of getting the ball into the back of the net. So just before we go, I'm going to tell the lads, I am very, very happy with how you have done. Good win, boys. Very well done. And that is where we are going to leave it for today. If you've enjoyed that video, pop a mahoosive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 2021 content, TEW 2020 content, and a whole lot of other stuff that is coming to the channel. Yep, guys, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time for England versus Scotland. Come on, England.